Yo, what up, people? It's your boy, The Life King, coming at you with a quick video. And uh, in this video, I just want to talk about some of the something I seen in the blog. So I don't know who that is. That's probably the new my player uh, person uh, character for next gen. But I'm gonna scroll down here to the uh, the takeover to the next gen AI. So. Basically, they say next gen was an opportunity to reset a lot of areas of gameplay. This was especially true when it came to the artificial intelligence. Some of these items are immediately noticeable and some are nuances for hardcore X's and O's hoop heads. But one thing's for certain, certain. NBA 2K continues to lead the way in accurately modeling its respective sports better than anywhere else out there. I don't know, man. NHL is, is creeping up on you guys. I don't know about MLB the show, but NHL is definitely making strides, not only in gameplay, but in the modes as well. So we'll see how that goes next year when it, when NHL hits next gen. But let's talk about 2K. That's something we pride ourselves in. And we know the true students of the game will appreciate about the franchise, whatever. So what I want to talk about is new switching on, uh, not that. It was about the hedging. Oops. Right here. We overhauled the hedge defensive system for better screening position and angle targeting. Uh, this is something that kind of bothered me in this clip here. I'm going to show you what right what bothers me right now. In this clip, we got LeBron James. We got Tyler, uh, not Tyler here, Duncan Robinson, Anthony Davis. We have uh, Jay Crowder over here. And we're going to run the clip. So right now we got Anthony Davis coming up to set the screen. Notice we have uh, Bam Adebayo guarding Dwight Howard over here. Right? This is one of the issues I had over the last two 2Ks. So Duncan Robinson is trying to go under the screen because, you know, LeBron is driving to the rim. He gets under the screen, but he's already late, right? So they cut to this part of the video. As you see, Duncan Robinson is struggling. And here we have Jay Crowder. Instead of, you know, trying to stay in front of LeBron, He's trying to get back to Anthony Davis, and Duncan Robinson is trying to get to LeBron. But here's where the, it gets real messy. You have Bam Adebayo leaving Dwight Howard to come guard LeBron from the other side of the paint. This is what bothers me about the whole player movement and the AI logic in 2K, right? In the settings, uh, the defensive settings, um, you can actually prevent the player from doing that. So uh, Jay Crowder, you can pre actually prevent him from going up to Dwight Howard, uh, not Dwight Howard, um, Anthony Davis, and he can drop down. But this is definitely default settings, right? So the only problem is I don't know if you're able to change uh, the defensive settings and keep it uh, global, not globally, but you know how you have um, custom presets? I wish you can just go in and just uh, customize every team scheme so that you don't have to deal with these type of frustrations because this is an easy bucket every time. So you have three players here, two that could have easily just uh, switched and you know stayed in front of LeBron, but now that you have now that you know the way the logic is, you have Bam Adebayo coming out of the other side to guard LeBron. And he pretty much has the whole lane. So if that was really LeBron, he would have had an easy dunk. But instead in the clip, he just pulls up for a mid-range jump shot. And that shouldn't even be the case. Like, it should have just been an easy switch. If the AI was so good in this game, the AI would already know this just to, okay, he can't beat his man. He can't get back to his man, so they have to switch. And they also talk about it here. 
New switching logic update both on ball and off ball screen logic has been rewritten and the auto switching logic was refined to reduce bad switching instances. So expect to see fewer cases of the AI calling for a switch without a screen and leaving a player open. So they're probably talking about the fact that um, a player in the corner would just be standing there and the AI would automatically just leave that player to collapse in the paint and the CPU just throws the ball out to the three point line and it's always a, bu always a bucket. But I'm not talking about that right now. I'm just talking about this right here because this has been an issue for 2K since 2K20. I didn't do much in depth in uh, 2K19. I didn't really play that game much until you know later in the year. But this right here just shows that there's still legacy issues in next gen. Now, once they they should have showed the menu, uh, the on the fly calling menu, and showed us what they what we can do in there, but they only gave us two examples. So they have playthrough star. This game plan will have Ace automatically select best score on the team and only run scoring actions for them. Found the ball inside, Ace auto selects the best post scorer on the team and will exclusively run post scoring actions and plays for them. Why can't 2K just open up the offense and all that stuff to the user? Why does it have to be AI controls? Like AI, the AI control stuff is cool, but when it comes to basketball, you don't want your players all over the court. And that's what this, this clip here is showing. It's showing that, you know, players are just... Like, why would he leave? If that was, if that was like the Boston Celtics defense that they were running, even the Miami Heat defense, they don't do that. Like, they would... They, you know how many times they close the lane on LeBron? In the playoffs, I'm not talking about the uh, the last game because they the the Lakers went small and they just pretty much dismantled them. But if you watch the Miami Heat defense throughout the playoffs, they never gave a lane to anybody, right? They never really switched. They just had a guy there uh, cherry picking in the lane so that you know they can deflect passes and stuff. So this this here is I don't know this is annoying. Like to me, Jay Crowder shouldn't even. Jay Crowder should have just stayed there. Bam Adebayo should have just dropped down to maybe uh, guard the rim and be able to box out Dwight Howard. But everybody's out of position, right? I don't know what Dragic over here is doing. Oh, he's guarding Danny Green over there. I see it now. So Danny Green is coming over. But there's no way that should have been an open shot for LeBron James. Like every time this happens to me in NBA 2K21 or 2K20, I immediately pause the game and change the hedging uh, defense and have them drop, have the bigs drop down because it's an easy bucket every time. End of game logic improved the AI's ability to time plays with the shot clock for buzzer beater situations. That's cool, but I want to know more about the timeouts as well because as soon as it hits two minutes, uh, you lose a timeout and the CPU will actually call a timeout uh, like under two minutes and then they only have two and they only end up one to close out the rest of the game. So I want to know more about the timeout logic. I don't think that's changed much either because they would have mentioned it in the blog. Fix AI players accidentally positioning themselves out of bounds. Yeah, that's an issue right now in current gen. New pick and roll spacing. New spacing code gives some of our pick and roll isolation sets that extra adjustment on dribble penetration. It's much more solid now, but expect continued expansion on the module as the year goes along in our in-season play and AI updates. <sighs> These guys are relying too much on the AI, man. Like a defensive, a defensive set should be a defensive set. Like you should be able to 
See, this is why I miss NBA Live, man. Because NBA Live, you can tell, you can, you can literally go in the menu on the fly and tell pe- teams and tell your team not to double team. You can't do that in 2K. Like they automatically would do the switching. They will automatically do, uh, you know, the drop downs, the hedging, and they 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 rely so, so much on the AI in 2K. And to me, the player movement is not even all that great for them to be relying on the AI that much. Like these are these are some good changes, I guess. But just off of this clip alone here. I don't know, man. They they have a lot of work to do. When to me, in terms of like player movement, anyway, I was actually gonna release a video today on, you know, comparisons of player movement with 2K and some other games, but I'm not even gonna bother because the player movement needs a, a whole overhaul. If they want any of this AI stuff to be consistent, like they have to go back into the to the mocap room and mocap like pretty much the whole player movement anyways i'm gonna leave the video at that i didn't want this video to be too long what do you guys think of the blog what do you think of you know my stance on some of the stuff that I, i've talked about in the this video leave a comment down below and i'm gonna catch you guys on the next video all right peace Six down, I'm in the city, 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 I'm in the